What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrubby here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am. And today I have a story time that's definitely uh, different than anything I've ever had sent in to me before. Apparently this guy's neighborhood was being terrorized by a group of kids on bicycles who would act like pirates and rob everybody else. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know how you get that idea. Watching a little bit too much Pirates of the Caribbean or something. Oh, if we just pretend to be Jack Sparrow, we can rob everyone. And he always gets away with it, so we will too. Either way, I just thought it was a uh, pretty crazy story time that you guys would enjoy. So without further ado, let's hop right into it, grab some popcorn, and let's go. All right, so the person who sent this in to me is uh, a lot older now, but at the time was probably around like 10 years old, and he had just moved into this new neighborhood that he thought was really cool because... It was one of those neighborhoods where people's yards are like kind of big, like an acre or two acre lots. So you still have like friends in the neighborhood you can play with, but you can also still have a tree house and some woods in your backyard. And he thought it was sick, but what he didn't know is that there was a group of kids in the neighborhood who really sucked. And he found out about it while riding his bike one day. He had like a cheap MP3 player his parents had bought him with like just some cheap headphones. You know, one that can hold like 15 songs. And he was riding around on his bike and he comes around the corner and he sees like four kids on bikes with some wooden swords and like a few of them are wearing eye patches and bandanas and he just thinks to himself oh these kids are playing pirate and so he goes to ride past them but he rides past them and he instantly gets this weird feeling and he turns around and he sees them following him and so he turns down his music but like doesn't let them know that he doesn't take his uh, headphones out which was pretty quick thinking i'll be honest and he kind of hears them talking about how they're going to take his iPod, they're going to take it from him, blah, 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 blah. So he starts riding his bike even faster, and they start riding faster and start yelling at him to stop. So he starts trying to get back to his house, but they had been here a lot longer than he was. So they take a little shortcut through the woods, cut him off, and one of them walks right up to him and smacks him with this wooden pirate sword right on the back. And it hurts, man. Like, listen, even if someone hits you with a Nerf sword really, really hard, it's not a very pleasant feeling. I'm not saying it's gonna, like, you know, permanently injure you, but you can bruise someone with one of those very easy. Getting smacked with a piece of wood definitely doesn't feel good, and so it kind of knocks him off his bike, and they're all standing over him, and they're like, give us your iPod, give us your iPod. And he's like, it's not an iPod, it's not an iPod, it's an MP3 player. And they're like, oh, that's garbage, give it to us. So he hands it over, because he doesn't want to get smacked again. And instead of taking it, they just put it on the ground and use a different one of their wooden swords to smash it. And he's like, what is wrong with you guys? And they're like, we know you're new here, but anything that you have of value, like, we're probably going to take it, you know, we're the pirates of the cul-de-sac, like, don't mess with us, blah, 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 blah. And the kid is like, what? Fine. Like, what is your guys' issue i won't mess with you guys but like what in the world and they're like yeah we've been doing this forever and if you tell your parents we're gonna have even bigger problems like we'll make your whole family's life suck and he's like dude you guys are nuts but clearly they're committed to being nuts considering they're just roaming around smacking people they don't know with wooden swords just to take things from them and break them. So whatever, he goes home and he just doesn't really tell his parents, which is dumb. I'm letting everyone know right now, uh, if someone smacks you with a wooden sword, you should tell someone. Because, like, I don't know why you would keep that a secret, man. Someone's got to nip that in the bud. That just seems like a pretty dangerous situation. Just a roaming gang of pirates on bikes smacking people. People with wooden swords like someone needs to call someone to make sure that this doesn't keep happening because this is psychotic all the kids just live in fear they're like so afraid to take their new skateboard out you know their parents why aren't you using your new skateboard son uh well uh uh is something going on no no but whatever he doesn't tell his parents and he goes up to his room and he's like dude what should i do and he had an older brother who was like 14 at the time, so like four years older than him. And so he goes to him and he kind of tells him the situation and is like, what should I do? And his brother says, well, you got to do something about it, which, you know, you should tell someone. I don't think you should necessarily go all Batman vigilante mode. But his brother goes, I'm going to give you something to help you like do something about it. And he says, okay. 
And his brother was a little bit older, so his parents had decided he was mature enough to have an airsoft gun. And so it was just like a, a little, little like, a, a, I don't know, AR-looking airsoft gun with a battery in it that could, like, shoot. And airsoft guns hurt, but you can't really do damage unless you, like, hit someone in the eye with it or something. And he goes, if they give you any trouble, just shoot them with this. And he's like, oh, yeah, your airsoft gun's so awesome. Because his brother, being his older brother, had, like, shot him with it before, so he knew how much it hurts. And he's like, yeah, they won't be able to rob me now. And one of the best parts about this house that they had moved into is that the family that had lived there before them had raised a bunch of kids. So there was, like, tree houses and zip lines and all this stuff, and one of them kind of overlooked the road. And so his plan was to go up there and yell at them that they needed to give him money for a new MP3 player. And, like, he wasn't even going to tell them that he had the airsoft gun. And if they tried to, like, rush him or attack him or anything, then he would use it. Because he didn't want to have to do it. He was like, maybe if I just stand up for myself, they'll respect me, you know? Like, he had seen enough movies about it. So whatever, he climbs up in the treehouse, and sure enough, about 15 minutes later, he hears some yelling and pedaling, and he thinks it's the pirate gang coming to, like, uh, ride their bikes by. But what he sees is a kid way smaller than him. Like, gotta be, you know, six, seven years old, pedaling as fast as he can away from the pirate gang. And they're gaining on him pretty easily because they're just a lot older than him. And eventually they come and they kind of run him off the road, like right underneath this guy's treehouse. The stars just align. And they walk up to this kid that they're at least twice as old as. And they start like hitting him with the wooden swords. And the kid's like, ow, stop, stop. And at that point, the kid is like, well, I can't go down there and do anything about it because there's so many of them, but I can just uh, open up the airsoft gun, I guess. So he like sticks it out and yells at them to stop and they're like, no. So he starts shooting the airsoft gun and they're all like, ow, 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 and they're running. And uh, he didn't really check to see how many pellets were in the little like magazine thing for the airsoft gun before he started. And there was only about like 20 pellets in there, so it runs out pretty quick. And obviously at that point, they're like, we're going to come get you for that. If you're going to shoot someone with an airsoft gun, they're not going to be thrilled about it. Like, let's be honest, chances are if you do something like this guy did, the pirates are going to come and try to like raid your treehouse. But at least they're not, like, focused on the, the little kid anymore. So they start walking over to the treehouse and starting to climb up the ladder. And so he starts looking around the treehouse and all he has is, like, some water bottles up there. So he just starts, like, trying to drop the water bottles down the ladder. And they're not very far up the ladder yet. So they stop and they're like, we're just gonna wait until you come down. We know you have to come down soon. And uh, he's in the treehouse and he starts realizing that this was not the best well-thought-out plan. Like, I don't really think you should do this. I'm not saying you should uh, do what he did. Obviously, you should, like, yell at them to stop if they're trying to rob another guy. But you get what I'm saying. I don't think this was the most well-thought-out plan. I don't think this was the best way to handle the situation. But here he is, stuck in the treehouse with them down there, saying that they're just gonna wait. And he doesn't really know what to do. And they had some, like, walkie-talkies in the treehouse, but he didn't know if his brother was home or not. So he just starts kind of going on the walkie-talkie, and he's whispering because he doesn't want them to hear him like calling for help and he's like bro listen i was really dumb i'm stuck in the treehouse the gang of pirates is standing underneath me they're just gonna wait till i have to come down like can you come help me and somehow by the grace of gray skull his brother is in his room and so he picks it up and he's like yeah i'll come out and so he opens and closes the back door really loud and uh, the gang of pirates kind of hears that and they are like we got to get out of here you know it's his parents we got to go and they go get on their bikes and they get out of there. And his brother comes over and he sees them riding their bikes away and he yells at them to stop. But obviously they don't stop. If they're willing to be roaming around like stealing people's stuff and smacking them with wooden swords, I don't really know how uh, telling them to stop is going to work. But whatever, they leave. His brother's like, what happened? He tells him what happened. They decide to go figure out where that kid lives. So they go over, knock on the door, ask if they can talk to him. His parents are like, yeah, sure. So they go get him and the little kid comes out and they're like, all right, what happened? And he says it's the fourth time that they've tried to rob him, but he never has anything on him. So they just get angry and tell him to bring something nice, which is absolutely bonkers. I mean, think about that. You try to rob someone and they have nothing on them and you're like, hey, next time you come, 
you better make sure that you have a wallet full of Benjamins, okay? I I'm over trying to rob you for four pennies. Like, I would just never have anything valuable on me after that point. If someone's repeatedly robbing you and keeps telling you to bring nicer things, just, just don't bring anything nice. Like, why would you do that? But whatever, they're realizing that this problem is really out of control. And even though they had threatened them with, like, if anyone told their parents, they decide that it's gone too far and they have to tell them. So because they were new in the neighborhood, they decide that they're going to tell their parents and they go and they do. And their parents decide to go around and talk to the other parents about it just to make sure that this wasn't just some rumor that they were telling the new kids to scare them. And all the parents ask their kids, and as soon as the parents start pressuring their kids about it, a bunch of them break, you know? Like, when their parents just weren't pressing them and asking questions, it was just no big deal. But the second they're like, is this going on? Like, please tell me, because we gotta take care of this if it's happening. They are like, yes, it happened, you know, they would steal our stuff and whatnot. And all the parents decide that they're gonna have to have a neighborhood meeting. A bunch of the dads wanted to, like, go over there and, like, yell at them. And they were like, no, no, you can't handle it that way. So they're gonna have a neighborhood meeting. And so all the parents go to the neighborhood meeting. So this is just what he heard from his parents who were at the neighborhood meeting, like, back when they came back and told him what had happened. Well, they started talking to the parents of the kids who were in the pirate gang. And they were kind of, like, split in their reactions. There was four or five kids. And uh, a few of them were, like, immediately outraged, went home to punish their kid because they were, like, so shocked that they would even think that that was okay. They didn't know it was happening. They just thought they were playing pirates outside. I mean, let's be honest. If your kid was like, hey, I'm gonna go play pirates and walked out with an eye patch and a wooden sword, you probably wouldn't think he was going to be roaming around actually robbing people like a pirate. You would probably just think they're like, I don't know, doing what kids do and like playing pirate. I just wouldn't assume that my kid's going on a robbed armory, like an armed robbery spree. I would just assume they're playing pirate. Why would you assume that they're going to be going around stealing from people? But a few of them were almost mad that anything was said. They were like yeah well my kids playing pirate what do you expect them to do as if that makes any sense like i don't know um build a pretend uh, ship fort out of sticks in the woods and like pretend that you found buried treasure you don't run around run like ramming people off the road hitting them with wooden swords you don't do that there are many ways you can play pirate without actually having to steal anything you know, or like maybe ask ask some of the other neighborhood kids like, okay, we're going to give you guys some fake gold and we're going to come pillage your ship. I feel like it's way messed up to just go around uh, smacking people with wooden sticks and then like taking their MP3 players and smashing it just to teach them a lesson. And those parents immediately start getting uh, drowned out and just screaming from the other parents who are like, you're not actually going to try to defend this right now. Like what's wrong with you? And the parents kind of double down for a bit and they're like, well, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. No wonder kids these days are so soft. Do I think kids these days are as tough as they were like in the in the 30s when the Great Depression was going on? No, of course not. A lot of those kids were working in factories at eight. And that being said, I don't think even tough people would really love being robbed and beaten with sticks. Oh, kids are so soft these days. Would you like to be robbed every day, good sir? If on your way to work, there was just some dude way bigger than you in the office and he walked up to you and just smacked you in the face with a log and said, give me your money, would you be like, ah, oh, yeah, of course, man, you're bigger than me, that's the way the world works. Would you be soft if you didn't like that? I don't think so. I don't think that makes you a soft person to not like being robbed. And at that point, a bunch of the parents decide that uh, they are going to threaten to do something that they didn't want to do. And they're like, well, if you're not going to tell your kids to stop it, the next time it happens, we're going to call the police. And at that point, I think the parents of the kids who were still like, oh, whatever, it's not that big of a deal, realized that they were going to get themselves in a lot more trouble and their kids in a lot more trouble and that these parents weren't messing around if they didn't shut it down and they should have shut it down. It's ridiculous that they had to be like blackmailed to go tell their kids to stop robbing people. No wonder some kids end up so weird. If your parents are just like, nah, robbery's not that big of a deal. Like, dude, no wonder you're roaming around smacking people with wooden swords. You have horrible role models at home. His dad just comes home every day. He's like, son, you will not believe what I got at the store today. I didn't pay for any of it. He walks outside. It's just like a semi-trailer full of stuff. But once they threatened to call the cops, they were like, okay, 
okay, we'll shut it down, we'll shut it down. So, uh, after that, no one went outside for a while. A bunch of the parents were afraid. They're like, until this gets handled, we're gonna give it a little bit for them to have the conversation and know that we're serious about it. We just don't want you guys, like, riding around. And the neighborhood was actually very united about not liking this, obviously. They had kept it a secret for a while, but as soon as the parents find out that, like, the stuff that they're giving their kids is being robbed and their kids are being threatened and hit with wooden sticks, they're pretty unified in stopping that. I feel like that's something that definitely gets people on the same page as, like, anything like this where the neighborhood begins to get unsafe, and especially if it's people's kids being robbed. Like, they'll do anything to make sure that their kids are safe. But what I don't think anyone expected was that, you know, some of the kids in the pirate gang coming door to door to all the kids that they had robbed and, like, giving them the stuff back if they still had it and reading a letter. And there was one kid who had actually definitely written his letter and was, like, actually sorry. He was sobbing as he read it. I'm so sorry. Which, uh, I, I guess that kid, whatever, lesson learned, I don't know. I don't know how much you can really, like, apologize for beating someone with a stick and taking their things. That just kind of seems out there. But whatever, at least he seems sorry. A couple of them definitely were just reading something that their mom wrote. Like, you know, you have to write an apology letter. Mom, I don't want to. This is stupid. You have to. Well, what should I write? You know, they're just standing there straight-faced, like, no emotion, acting like they don't want to be there. I'm really sorry for breaking your MP3 player. It probably was not very cool of me. But a lot of the people, like, came and apologized. The kids whose parents were like, no, we're not going to make our kids stop it. Your kids just need to toughen up. Their kids didn't come and apologize, but honestly, considering that they didn't even really care until they threatened to get the cops called, I can't find that surprising. But what was really hilarious is that, like, the subscriber who sent this to me, because his older brother was a little bit older, was just trolling the kids whenever they would come to apologize. Like, they'd be reading the letter, you know? I'm really sorry. Sorry for what? (laughs) Trying to be a pirate. And stealing all the stuff. And running you off the road and making you crash your bike and then hitting you with a wooden stick. And, and just like making them go on and on. But whatever, the two kids that hadn't apologized were obviously pissed off that their little ruse had been shut down. And for some reason, they were really mad at the subscriber's older brother. The one who had like come out and saw them and then decided to tell everyone, blah, 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 blah. So those two decided that they were going to get revenge by robbing his older brother. Their plan was to kind of do their usual pirate tactic of like running someone's bike off the road, making them crash, just kind of like hitting them, kicking them, whatever it may be, just doing anything you can to uh, make them give you the stuff. But his older brother was a little bit older than these two and a bit bigger too, so whatever. He's riding his bike and he sees those two following him and he's not an idiot. He figures out pretty pretty quickly that if these two guys are going to be following him, they're probably up to no good. Considering all of the other pirate guys had, like, apologized and really had left it alone, and these two guys were uh, looking pissed off and clearly kind of, like, communicating to each other, his brother decides to just kind of start going faster, they start going faster, and at that point, it's on, it's a high-speed bike chase, you know, it's, uh, the, the scene from 21 Jump Street when they're chasing everybody on the bikes, just going around, just chasing each other. However, his brother brother had been, uh, I don't know if it had been, like, inspired by, maybe it was just convenient that it happened like this, had been, like, watching Star Wars, I guess, and you know when they're flying the fighters, and they'll, like, do a maneuver to make two enemy fighters crash into each other? He just kind of starts weaving, making super tight turns, and it's forcing them to, like, get closer and closer to each other on the bikes to, like, keep up with each other. And so, he realizes that they keep kind of lining up one in front of the other, so he goes down this really thin alleyway where it's basically basically enough for you to like ride your bike down it but not much else and right at the end he just decides to make them crash into each other and he slams on the brake you know full star wars fighter pilot er, the two enemy fighters except uh what happened was it was like all three of them in a line there was probably about 15 feet between the guy's older brother and like the first guy trying to rob him in like two feet between him and the other guy So when he slammed on his brake, the first guy slammed on his brake and the second guy did, but obviously that didn't really work in time because he only had like two feet to react, so they just crash into each other. And because it was a thin alleyway and they were going so fast, the guy in the back kind of flips over the guy in the front, his bike goes up and slams down, 
and the older brother is just laughing because obviously these guys have been like up to no good trying to rob him and he had literally made them crash into each other had to have felt pretty 500 IQ big brain so uh he's laughing at them and they get up they're like it's not funny except like one of them has pretty messed up his shoulder area come to find out he had broke his collarbone but whatever they're all pissed off they're like you should give us what you have in your pocket since you made us crash and he's like no i'm not gonna do that you guys were trying to rob me why would i give you something because you guys crashed and they're like well you made us crash and he said yes because you guys were chasing me trying to rob me and they're like yeah but that doesn't mean that you have to make us crash our bikes I don't know, man, but I also think it means that he's allowed to make you crash your bikes. Like, if someone's chasing you and you make them run into a wall, you're not suddenly responsible for them running into the wall. Because if they wouldn't have been trying to rob you, you wouldn't have had to been taking evasive maneuvers now, would you? But whatever, the older brother just bikes away at that point, and they only knew that the kid had broken his collarbone because a couple days later they saw him, like, going to the mailbox. You know, his parents had told him to go check the mail. And he had the little cast thing on that people get when they uh, break their collarbone. And I love that they were trying to get revenge on who they blamed for it all, only to end up getting themselves even more hurt. And the older brother hadn't decided to tell his parents or anything. He told his little brother, but didn't want to get them in more trouble. He figured them being hurt was enough. And uh, thankfully, after this one, they did learn their lesson. First time around, they really could have just walked away, just got to apologize. No, we've got to go for the ultimate crime. That's like going to jail for, like, bank robbery, getting out, and the first thing you do is go rob a bank. Oh, were all those years sitting in jail thinking about robbing the bank? Were you inspired to do it even better? I can break my record time. You know, they did give up pirating after that, probably because it became a self-hazard. Clearly, they didn't care about stealing from people or anything. But I'm sure when he broke his bone and they were trying to explain to his parents what happened and it involved chasing someone on a bike and crashing, it was like, all right, you guys got to really leave that alone now. I'm saying they should have stopped. Everyone else stopped. But if these kids' parents didn't even want to make them apologize, can we really say we're surprised that it took them getting hurt to stop? Oh no, now that I'm robbing people and they're not going to let me and they're going to make me crash on my bike, I no longer want to rob anyone. Like, that's what's going to make you do it, not the fact that it's just not your property and it's messed up to take things that don't belong to you. No, no, no hang-ups on that. You're perfectly fine breaking someone's MP3 player to take them a lesson. But the second they make you crash on your bike, it's too much, guys. I simply cannot continue to take these risks. My health matters too, okay? Robber safety is very important. Everyone has since grown up. The two kids that had tried to rob him again, the one who broke his collarbone and the one whose like, parents didn't want to make him apologize, they ended up moving about like six, seven months after that and they didn't really keep touch. So they don't really know what happened to them. As for every other pirate, they've now reformed from their ways of piracy and have decided to live in a more civilized era. You know, they, they went full privateer. They're just robbing people with permission of the HOA now. That's a joke. That's a joke. But seriously, like, they just became semi-normal. I mean, obviously, if you do stupid things when you're a kid, you can grow up and change. I don't think that's impossible. I think even if, like, there's enough time, if you do something dumb and you're an adult, you could probably change too. That being said, uh, it is really funny that they're, like, still walking around with the shame knowing that they used to be pirates. Someone starts talking about Pirates of the Caribbean. They're like, in my personal pirating experience, I would say da 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 They're like, personal pirating experience? Yes, yes, I used to be the captain of a pirate crew. I would love to know where the two that decided to go for the follow-up robbery are now, though. Probably, like, I, I don't know, out in the woods somewhere, just like... You know that guy who lived in that town in California and would just break into cabins when people weren't there and steal their food for like 25 years? They're probably living like that, just still have an eye patch on and go, arg. That's like the only thing they can say now. It's been so long since they've had contact with other humans. They've just gone semi-feral. Anyways, uh, moral of the story, don't rob people or you will break your collarbone. I know most of you probably didn't need to be told that anyways, but just in case you're out there and like, I want to be a pirate, don't do it. Being a pirate is bad. All right, there's my PSA. Anyways, beyond that, if you guys did enjoy the video, I'd really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. I'm going to ask you guys nicely, okay? I'm going to say please with extra sugar on top to comment the word road down below if you made it this far into the video, okay? That's it. I asked extra nicely with sugar, so please just comment the word road. Thank you. It helps the video do better. And if you like these videos, but you'd rather listen to the audio, I do post all of the audio over on Spotify. Link down below in the description. Feel free to check it out. And you can also check out the playlist I made here on YouTube that can uh, 
waste some time for you if you need something to listen to while you're doing chores homework video games whatever it may be and you need something to listen to check that out both of those links can be found down in the description and uh they're both pretty swagtastic if i say so and uh yeah on that note guys i think that'll do it for the video thank you all so much for watching i'm gonna keep talking for a little bit longer just because i hit two uh cool deagle shots here i guess it's the sheriff in this game but whatever it's the deagle if you play csgo oh there's one oh wow Wow. Oh, another. Wow, wow, wow. What, what a clever, clever dinosaur move right there. Anyways, don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot, and hopefully I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.